And, um, thank you for joining me this morning. The first uh, point I think that we have to explore is to what extent is uh, the legacy of Boris Johnson and indeed the brief legacy of Liz Truss now being torn up by this new government. Boris Johnson make, made a big play in his final speech to Parliament behind that dispatch box, saying that we need to make those long-term investment decisions, we needed to set aside what he called treasury mindset, and we needed to invest in things like new nuclear. Now it looks like that might well be abandoned. Yeah, I mean, if you think about the last election in a bit of, bit of a larger historical context, the Conservatives only have won a sizable majority once in over 30, 35 years, really. You, know, you have to go back to 1987 with Thatcher. Of course, they won the 92 election and they won in 2015, but they were pretty small majorities. The Johnson achievement was to create a kind of new coalition of Conservative voters to put the Conservatives' tanks on Labour's lawn in the uh, Midlands and North, and that required a different set of policy priorities for the for the party. We are still in that parliament. I know it doesn't feel like it, but we are still in the parliament that was elected on the 2019 uh, mandate. And really, b between Truss and, and now Sunak, the Conservative government seems to be um, forgetting the mandate on which it was elected. And governments that forget the mandate that put them in office often risk a backlash from them, those voters when they meet them again at the next general election. December 2019 does feel like a complete world away. It was a time before COVID. It was a time when Brexit was on the uh, forefront of everyone's lips as the predominant issue. I, I wonder to what extent can politicians perhaps be forgiven for thinking that, this, that it wasn't only two and a half years ago, that it was in fact a lot, lot longer ago? Yeah, of course, you know, governments can say that the circumstances change and the manifesto commitments they make have to be seen in the light of those circumstances. But that's about it, adjusting priorities in light of, of those challenges. It's not about adopting a completely different set of priorities. I mean, it seems to me that what Rishi Sunak might be intending to do is to try to bring back more of the kind of David Cameron, George Osborne approach to uh, conservative governance. And the problem with that is that uh, A, it didn't actually achieve a huge majority for the conservatives in 2015. It didn't win the majority at all in 2010. And that the group of voters that helped them win that small majority in 2015, uh, voters like in places like in Oxford West, um, which amazingly, you know, once upon a time, not that long ago, had a Conservative MP, um, they're not coming back. So it's, you know, it's because of Brexit and the kind of social changes that have occurred. So I, I, I think it's a flawed strategy to think that, uh, you know, you can kind of go pre-Boris uh, in terms of policy priorities and think that you're going to produce Boris Johnson-sized majorities the next election.